What I'm going to show you today is how to properly test an IGBT. An IGBT stands for Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. Right here I have drawn out two IGBTs in series. It has a gate, a collector, and an emitter. A normal bipolar junction transistor would have a base collector and emitter. An IGBT has a gate, so it is similar to a MOSFET. This side of the IGBT is like a MOSFET. This side of the IGBT is like a bipolar junction transistor. So the benefits of an IGBT is it can handle high voltages and high currents between the collector and the emitter. But it also can be biased on by a small voltage between the gate and the emitter. This diode right here um, protects the IGBT from reverse currents. It, it, it lets um, the current fly back. It's, sometimes they call it a flyback diode. If I were to put my meter leads right here, I would read the voltage drop across that diode. Some IGBTs don't have that diode, so that's something that you're going to want to look up a spec sheet to see if that diode is. Most do. Some do not. So if I would put my meter leads here, I should expect a diode voltage drop. If I were to put my meter leads here, I will get what my meter usually would say OL, which means open lead. I won't get a voltage drop because the current can't pass through this diode and the current can't pass through this collector emitter junction. So, a standard package on a three phase um, inverter section, you'll see, is right here. Right here I have a three phase a motor driver. You'll see this, it'll usually drive a three phase motor. Right here is an IGBT package, right here is an IGBT package, and right here is an IGBT package. I call it a package because each one has two IGBTs in it. If you look closely here, this, th this point right here is the collector 2 emitter 1. If you go back to my drawing, You'll see why they call it collector 2 emitter 1, because that's where the two IGBTs are connected together. It is the collector of the second IGBT. That's why they call it collector 2. And it's also the emitter of the first IGBT. So they call it, as you can see over here again, collector 2 emitter 1. Then we have here emitter 2, and we also have collector 1 right here. These little pins right here don't carry much current. So you can see that one's called gate one and emitter one. Over here we can see gate two and emitter two. So what happens, the reason them are small leads is because they are from the control board. The control board will send a voltage between gate two and emitter two and it'll turn on the current or it'll allow current to flow from collector to, to emitter to. I can show you here an example of the perfect test for an IGBT. I'll turn my meter over here on the diode section. So to start testing this thing, there's one crucial part that nobody will ever tell you. Between this gate and this emitter, you want to take a lead or a piece of metal and you want to jumper them two together because you don't want a charge built up on a gate. Something about an IGBT, it works just like a MOSFET. If you have a charge built up on the gate, it will conduct. So the gate of a MOSFET and the gate of an IGBT both look like a, a capacitor, sort of. If you were not to short these out, there might be a charge on the gate, and there would be a potential that you'll be able to get a current flow through the IGBT when you shouldn't. So on these gate to emitters, I want to short them out firstly. I want to make sure they're shorted out before I begin any testing. Remember on a meter, when you're on a diode test, there's a voltage applied to your red node, and the black node, or the black lead, is where the voltage is going to run to. So out of this, I'm going to get a charge to flow out of this lead into this lead. And it measures the voltage drop to break the bias or the bias voltage drop. So the first thing we want to check here is we want to apply this voltage to the ground. So we want to make sure that nothing, watch, you can see open lead, which is what we want to see. Got to make sure nothing on this 
IGBT is touching the ground. Secondly, I'm going to short these out again just to make sure that no charge built up on the gate. MOSFETs are very touchy if there's a charge on the gate. Secondly, I want to take um, from my gate to my emitter. I'll check gate to emitter. Open lead. Most people there would think gate emitter. Well, that should be dropping like 3, 4, 5 volts, maybe 6 volts, whatever the gate to emitter turn on voltage is. But the thing is you have to remember these fluke meters, my particular meter and most meters, only test diodes up to 3, 3.1 volts. Some will go up to 5, some will go up to 9, but most are in that 3 volt range. And if the gate to emitter turn, turn on voltage is higher than 3 volts, it'll show open lead. So after checking that, I want to ground that, I, I want to short that back out. Same thing over here. Gate to emitter, open lead. Good. Exactly what I want to see. Short that back out after checking it. All right. So now it comes to checking the high current parts. We want to check from collector one to emitter one. There should be no current flow there. Exactly what it says on the meter, open lead. Now we want to check from collector two to emitter two, open lead, perfect. Now we want to check from collector one to emitter two. We're going through both IGBTs at this point. Open lead, exactly what you want to see. Now if I were to reverse my leads and I were to go from emitter one to, to collector one, I'm going to see the voltage drop across the diode. That's this diode right here on my drawing. So I went just like this. I'm pretty much metering there. So you're going to see a voltage drop. If that's short circuited, that's not right. It should, you should see the voltage drop across that diode. If I were to check this one right here, emitter two to collector two. Emitter two to collector two. Voltage drop of about 0.4. That, that's right where it needs to be. The voltage drop normally on these things is between 0.3 and 0.7. If I were to go and check the other one, which I'm not sure if I did yet, emitter one to collector one. You see that voltage drop also. Now if I check both of them, I can see double the voltage drop because I'm going right here from emitter two to collector one. So I have the voltage drop here and the voltage drop there. So it's double the voltage drop. Things you want to check to make sure Want to make sure you don't have any connections from gate to virtually anything. You shouldn't have any. You shouldn't have anything from the gates to anything. Perfect. That that is a good IGBT right there. One thing that's going to screw people up. I want to reiterate this. If I were to charge up my gate. Remember, there's three volts on that red lead and there's zero on the black. So I'm charging up my gate right now, and that is actually gate one. That, because it's like a capacitor on the input of the, of the MOSFET, I just charged up my gate. And now, my gate one to emitter one has a charge on it. So my collector one to emitter one will allow current to flow. Let's see if I can prove that. See that right there? Collector one to emitter one's allowing a 0.45 voltage drop. If you've seen that, normally you would think that's a bad IGBT, but it's not. I charged up my gate. If I were to short out my gate, I can show you exactly that. Now it shows open. So that's a way you can get confused by testing these. You want to make sure your gate to emitter is short, and then you do your diode checks. You can also do ohm checks, and you'll see relatively similar responses. But for MOSFETs and for IGBTs, it is much easier if you have a diode test on your meter. All right, now I'm going to show you what a bad IGBT looks like. Let's do our normal test, as if I didn't know this was bad. I am firstly, I'm going to put my lead on the ground, I'm going to check all my points, 
Looking for anything to be short of the ground. Nothing short of the ground. Remember, I'm going to short out for a second my gate two emitters. Now, I'm going to put my lead on the collector. One, two emitter, one. Open lead, the meter shows. So that's right. Now, collector two, two emitter two. Open lead. That looks good. Now, I'm going to do it. Uh, collector one. Two emitter two to go through both IGBTs openly. I don't know if you can see the meter at that height, but yeah, open lean there. Now I'm going to take and reverse them just to make sure that that diode's in there and that's not short circuited uh, in a backwards direction. So to do that, I would go from emitter one to collector one, and I see 0.39, so I can see that diode's there like it should be. And I'm going to check the other direction, 0.39. And I'm going to check through both of them, 0.78. So that all looks good. So far, the power section of this IGBT checked out. Um, nothing's grounded. I'm going to jump or gate the emitter before I check any connections. Remember, nothing should be connected to the gate. So I'll check everything here. Open, open, open. Open, can even reverse our leads. Open, 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 open. I'm gonna short that back out, short this back out. Go from this gate. Whoa, see what we have there? We have a short between the gate, gate number two and collector two, emitter one. So if I go over here, we have a short from gate two to collector two emitter one. That is absolutely no good. You cannot have any connection between your gate and any other of these power conductors. Like I said, the input of a MOSFET or an IGBT looks like a capacitor. It'll charge up small capacitor charges charges up quick and there should be no connection it should read open lead from the gate to everything and this one shows almost 0.013 volts to um, overcome that bias a good a good IGBT will not have that see that open lead short so that is how you properly test an IGBT